Thank you, Chairman. And uh, let me start by just thanking Senator Erst for holding this hearing on our nation's defense laboratories and technological innovation. Uh, I know we both understand the significance of their impact on national security and the economy. Uh, today's hearing will help us better understand the Department of Defense laboratory enterprise and how this committee can work together to help it flourish. The DOD Lab Enterprise is a network of roughly 60 individual laboratories across the country, including two in my home state of New Mexico, which is proud to host the uh, Air Force Research Laboratory at Kirtland Air Force Base, where I actually started my career, and the Army Research Laboratory at White Sands Missile Range. The thousands of men and women at the laboratories, both public servants and contractors, play several critical roles for the DOD including rapidly deploying new equipment to the battlefield. For example, the labs did the engineering work uh, necessary f to get the uh, mine-resistant ambush protected vehicles, or MRAPs as we know them, to theater as a rapid response to an operational need, supporting acquisition programs to make sure that DOD is a smart and technically informed buyer of advanced technologies and helping control costs of major weapon systems, and performing cutting-edge next-generation science and engineering research at a network of labs, as well as managing research and development programs in industry and universities, which have led to equipment and weapon systems that our warfighters depend on, like advanced radar, satellite systems, and munitions. A recent Defense Science Board study of the lab stated that the labs are the core muscle the department has to create, transition, and deploy technology to the warfighter but we need to do more to make sure that those muscles are strong and healthy, and that is the focus of the hearing we're having today. I know that all uh, organizations suffer from constraints on their budget, and the labs are no different. I hope our witnesses can highlight the biggest budgetary challenges facing the labs so that we can consider how we can address them as we work on this year's Defense Authorization Act. I'm also interested in understanding how reductions to funding for civilian science agencies, agencies like NASA and NSF, will affect science and technology that is important to defense missions, and whether the labs could, with more resources, help address shortfalls in the nation's scientific enterprise that may be coming due to those budget cuts, for example, in areas like STEM education or even university research. I also would like the witnesses to help the subcommittee understand how we can support the labs by streamlining laws and regulations and bureaucratic processes. On the Armed Services Committee, we've done a lot in the past to make the hiring process easier at the labs so that our labs can better compete with private sector enterprises to get the best talent. And I also know there are major challenges in funding lab facilities and equipment and in untangling the labs from government red tape. I'd like to hear the witnesses' ideas on what red tape they encountered personally in the many years of service at the labs and how we can best address some of those challenges. And finally, I know the DOD leadership in this committee want to make sure that our warfighters benefit from the great spirit of American innovation, including private-public partnerships with Silicon Valley. I know the DOD has efforts like DARPA and DIUX that try to leverage commercial innovation for the benefit of DOD, and I think the labs can and should play a bigger role in those efforts. And I'd love to hear from our witnesses uh, their views on how we can best make that happen. So I look forward to all of your testimony here today, and we'll turn it back over to the chair.